Hello and welcome to the third chapter of our course on ISO 8583, Transaction Processing from Terminal to Issuer. This chapter is called Message Format and we are going to detail how ISO 8583 messages are formatted. In this first video, we are going to give you an overview of payment messages. Let's start with the general concept. Services of the financial industry include the exchange of electronic messages relating to financial transactions. ISO 8583 is designed as an interface specification, enabling messages to be exchanged between systems adopting a variety of application specifications. This is what you can see on the bottom diagram. The merchant terminal communicating with the acquirer host, the acquirer communicating with the payment network, and the payment network communicating with the issuer. And those are just a few examples. Agreements on application specifications are generally at a private level. More on the general concept, maybe phrased differently. ISO 8583 is an international standard for financial transaction card originated interchange messaging. It is the International Organization for Standardization, standard for systems that exchange electronic transactions initiated by cardholders using payment cards. The vast majority of transactions made when a customer uses a card to make a payment in a store use ISO 8583 at some point in the communication chain, as do transactions made at ATMs. Although ISO 8583 defines a common standard, it is not typically used directly by systems or networks. It defines many standard fields, data elements, which remain the same in all systems or networks, and leaves a few additional fields for passing network-specific details. These fields are used by each network to adapt the standard for its own use with custom fields and custom usages. As we explained in the first chapter, there are several versions of ISO 8583. It comes in three versions, 1987, 1993, and 2003. The vast majority of existing protocols are based on version 1987 and 1993. The components of message structure are unchanged from the 1987 to the 1993 edition. Version 1993 mostly contains a simplification of message types, more detailed descriptions, and extensions to support a broader range of processing options. The ISO 8583 1993 document has a whole chapter dedicated to changes from the 1987 version. Application specific protocols define which version of ISO 8583 they are based on. In this course, we will mostly focus on ISO 8583 version 1993, but we will point at differences with version 1987 when they are worth mentioning. Let's now look at the concept of message. ISO 8583 defines a message as a set of data elements used to exchange information between institutions or their agents. An important point is that no communications, so that header, trader, protocol, or character code, or security implications are assumed or identified. If you look at the image of the two servers exchanging information, ISO 8583 defines how they would interpret data at a high level. But there are lots of low-level details that need to be worked out between those two servers in order for them to exchange information. And this is outside the scope of ISO 8583 and left for the top layer protocol or application specific protocol to make decisions on. Let's look at the actual message as it transits on the wire. The full message may contain a length indicator to tell the receiving system how many bytes of message it should expect. It may also contain a message header, typically to exchange data that would be outside the scope of ISO 8583. Those might include routing information, system-related processing data, and information on why a message might be rejected. If the message is based on ISO 8583, then the full message will obviously contain the ISO 8583 message, which we will detail in this chapter. 
And finally, it may contain trailer data. In some cases, this might be to indicate the end of the message. But it can also be to provide a checksum on the message to ensure its data integrity, such as an LRC or a CRC. Let's zoom in on the ISO 8583 message content. The transaction data contains information derived from the card, like the account number and the card expiry date, from the terminal, like the merchant number, from the transaction, like the amount or the transaction date, and from other data which may be generated dynamically, like an EMV card cryptogram, or added by intervening systems. The content of an ISO 8583 message is made of a message type identifier, or MTI, one or more bitmaps indicating which data elements are present, and data elements, the actual information fields of the message. So, if we go back to our full message picture, inside the ISO 8583 message are, in that order, the message type identifier, one or more bitmaps, and data elements. Here is an example of a full message. It starts with a length indicator on 4 bytes. That indicates to the receiving system how many bytes of message to expect. It is followed by a message header, and then is the ISO 8583 message, starting with the message type identifier, followed by the bitmaps, which are themselves followed by the data elements. And in this case, there is no trailer data. Here is another example of a full message. This is coming from a terminal. This one starts with a length indicator on 2 bytes, indicating to the acquire host how many bytes of message to expect. It is followed by a short message header, and then is the ISO 8583 message, starting with the message type identifier, followed by the bitmaps, which are themselves followed by the data elements. And this one finishes with a 32-bit CRC checksum as trailer data. This message looks longer than the previous one because the encoding format is different. As we said before, the encoding format is not defined by ISO 8583 and is left as an implementation choice for the top layer protocol. In this case, you can quickly see that the message type identifier and the bitmaps are coded in ASCII, so they look much longer than the previous example where they were just sent in binary format. This concludes the first video in this third chapter. Thank you for watching it.